Volumetric lighting is a lighting technique where you can actually see the rays of light in the scene. In practical effects, this would be achieved by putting particulates in the air, like what they would do in every movie scene that involves lasers. They'll slice it to pieces. In computer graphics, this is normally done by using a volume to replicate the smoke or humidity in the air. However, if you're trying to go for an older CGI aesthetic like I tried to do, or you're running Blender on an old microwave you got at the thrift store, then using volumes may simply be out of the question. So, when you're met with technical limitations, either real or imaginary, you simply have to adapt and be more creative. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fake volumetrics in Blender 2.9. So to start off simple, I have a small demo scene here with a flashlight in it. And I want to allude that there's dust or smoke in the air. Maybe this flashlight's being used in some abandoned old house or something along those lines. First, I'm going to select our flashlight and go into edit mode. And I'm going to select this face where the light is supposed to be coming out from. And I'm going to hit Control E to bring up the edge menu. And then I'm going to select extrude edges and move them out and away from the flashlight. Then I'm going to select the ring of faces we just created by alt clicking and hitting Y to split them away from the original flashlight. I'm doing this because the light ring that we just created has no reason to be connected to the original mesh and it might even cause shading issues if we're not careful. Next, I'm going to swap into the shader editor workspace and from there make the material for the volume ray. I'll start off by adding a new material to our object by clicking the plus sign and hitting new. To make this material, I'll be deleting the principal shader and then I'm going to add an emission shader and a vertex color node where I'm going to plug the color into both the color slot and the strength slot. I'll come back to this in a bit. Then I'm going to throw in an add shader node and finally I'm going to add a transparent shader node which I'm going to connect both the emission shader and the transparent shader to the add shader node and then plug this into the final material output. And this is the basis of the final material that we're going to be using. Of course I did speed through this rather fast so I'm sure we would like a bit of an explanation as to what this does. If you're familiar with color blending methods this is an additive shader. Let me show you what I mean. For this volumetric light ray, we need a shader that behaves like light. We observe light in three primary colors, red, blue, and green. And when they all come together, these three add up to form white. And much like this additive property of light, our additive shader adds its colors to whatever is behind it. The only thing really special about this material is the add shader and the transparency shader combo, since that's what's giving it this additive property. And finally, I'm using the emission shader with this, since it is going to be acting as the actual light part of the light ray. However, However, we're going to have to do some more cleanup before we continue, since the material still isn't ready. First of all, we need to tell the material that it's going to be using alpha transparency. Otherwise, it may melt the screen when we try to add vertex paint. So we're going to go to the materials tab, and down in the settings, we're going to change the blending mode from opaque to alpha blend. And while we're here, let's change the shadow mode to none. It would just be silly if the light cone itself was casting its own shadow. And finally, to get the material to work, we need to throw some vertex color on our volume light to create a gradient. I'm going to go into vertex paint mode, and to make this gradient, I'm just going to paint this outer edge black. Then I'll go into edit mode to break up the gradient with some loop cuts. And now that we have the material set up and basically working, it's time I address a few elephants in the room that I'm sure a few people have noticed about this material. Number one, since it is dependent entirely on the vertex paint for the gradient, the only way to change the color is to go back and repaint the mesh in vertex paint mode. That is the only way if your brain is as smooth as the beat I once snorted as a child. To have control over the color, we need to add a mix RGB node to the material, then set the mix mode to color and the factor the 1. And now we can set the color to anything we want without affecting the brightness and the strength of the beam. And more importantly, we don't have to repaint our vertices. And number 2. Why is the color of the vertex color plugged into the strength value of the emission? This is a good question since what I've done may look like I pushed a metaphorical square peg through a circular hole without fracturing reality in the process. Prepare for some galaxy brain sh**. I believe I talked about this in a past video, but in Blender, a value between 1 and 0 is actually represented as a tone between white and black, respectively. And as light gets further away from the source, it scatters, reducing its strength. So what I've done is I'm making the vertex paint do double duty, acting as both the color of the light as well as the strength of the light as it gets further away from the source. However, as it is, we can't really control the strength of the emission since it's being overrode by the vertex color data. So what we can do to fix that is we can add a math node to intercept the connector going to the strength socket and set the mode to multiply and now we can adjust the strength of the emissions properly. Now after going through all that trouble to make this fake volume material, I do not want to have to remake this node every time I want to use a volumetric lighting. And I'm sure you don't either. So now I'm going to show you how to package this node set up for later use. To make this into a reusable node, I'm going to select everything except the vertex colors and the material output and hit Control G. This will create a new node group. 
We can exit this node group by hitting tab and while we're out here, let's rename this node group to something helpful like additive emission shader. Okay, from this external view of the node tree, we no longer have any actual control. The only thing we can do is plug in our color data from the vertex colors and that's about it. We still need to make the interface for this node so we can manipulate it properly. So let's go back into the node group editor by clicking on our node and hitting tab. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to quickly remove all of the inputs so that way we can start from scratch. The first input we need needs to be the vertex color gradient we made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the input from the color mix RGB node and drag it to the group input node. This will create a node input socket on the external interface of the node. And I can also rename it up here in the node's context menu. I'll rename this to vertex colors so I know that's where I plugging them in next time. And since this input doubles as our emission strength control value, I'm going to plug this into one of the multiplied node sockets. Then we need to plug in the second color value from the color RGB node and the last value of the multiply node. And I'll rename them color control and emission strength respectively. And now, finally, we have a finished additive material for a fake light rays. And if you want to use this node across different blend files, all you need to do is save it as its own blend file. And here's how you access this from any blend file. If you go up here to file, find options where it says link, click on it and it will open up this file browser. Find the original blend file, open it up, go to the node tree folder and finally click on the emission shader node that we created. And in the shader editor, we can add this node by hitting shift A and going down to the groups menu and selecting our node. All right, with this, I hope you found the video interesting. I'll hopefully be making some follow-up videos on how to utilize this technique in a couple different ways. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss any of those videos when they come out. Be sure to leave a comment or question if you have any, and be sure to check out the PS1 Discord and subreddit linked in the description below. I am the Sickly Wizard, and with that, have a good day.